Greetings, adventurers, and welcome back to the Den of the Drake. Other dragons hoard gold while I hoard internet cringe. Happy 40,000 subscribers! <laughs> As I'm sure you're all aware, the number 40k is a very special number in my heart. Why? Oh, no reason, just a really niche science fiction RPG wargame franchise called Warhammer 40k. However, there's also tragedy surrounding the franchise for me. I have a confession. I have never played Warhammer 40k before. I love the lore, the factions, the books, the artwork, and the grimdark aesthetic. But never once have I actually rolled dice or owned an army of my own. For a very simple reason. While I love 40k, I also loathe a lot of the people who play 40k. With hordes of degenerates all waddling towards a hobby like a pack of morbidly obese moths to a flame, it's no surprise that Warhammer 40k has its fair share of horror stories. And it seems only right that we celebrate 40k subscribers by diving into the depths of 4chan and discovering a Warhammer 40k story. Today's story stars a DM who wants to muscle furry shenanigans into the Warhammer 40k setting, only for their players to react exactly how you would expect them to. Now, without any further delay, let's go ahead and dive right into this Warhammer 40k furry 4chan horror story. Enjoy. Our DM smote us. He smote all of us. We're playing Dark Heresy in the depths of the Hive City after 10 sessions of tracking down a temple tendency operation to destroy the hive in order to replace every single person of leadership with temple supporters. We've apparently been listed as dead by the Inquisition, and someone has been remotely saving our bacon and doing us favors, all while leaving us a trail to the temple's operations. We are a sick strong force of former Arbides hot on the heels of some heresy, and level 5 to boot. We all have opted for power mauls, shields, and big ass shotguns with exterminator modules mounted. Out from the darkness steps a furry. He is described by the DM as being regal looking, and like a dog, but a man yet, and muscular, wearing a body glove, and armed with two wicked looking weapons. He explains in a voice that is described as the DM as noble, strong-hearted, but wary, that he is the person behind us being saved, placed as MIA as well as the string of clues. He explains that he has been hunting the temple tendency and hates the cult for what they did to his race eons ago. He explains that he is the last of his race and that he is slowly dying. Chief Arbity then says, Correction, dead. And we all open fire, killing him instantly. Ew. The DM rage quits. The next week we find out that the DM was a closet furry and this was his way of coming out to us. And that the DM PC was his avatar. I guess we should have realized that it was important when he described every detail of his muscle-bound dogman for about five minutes. Oh well, suffer not the mutant. Chapter 2 DM mentioned above, who rage quit, kinda got upset with us for a while, but eventually found his people. And by his people, I mean the store's contingent of fox-tailed wearing fat people. I have nothing against fat people, but what I do have something against is people who claim to be persecuted for their lifestyle choice, when their lifestyle choice involves becoming a gigantic tool to anyone who doesn't share their love of really weird shit. <clears throat> Anyhow, he manages to dry his eyes and decides to start all over with more professionally minded and more serious inquisitorial party. 
And here I thought I was doing my job, right? I mean, I have a gun, a gun that shoots fire. There are things I don't like, so I shoot them with said gun. Problem solved. His new game that is super serious is closed to people who are not serious role players, which means people who are furries are welcome. Whereas the rest of us must enjoy being normal people who enjoy goofing off. Just when you thought all dorks were united, right? So he says that we can join his game if we make serious characters. His party is full of furries playing furries. He explains this as they are from an ancient alien race, not chaos, that once helped humans. But humans turned on them, blah de blah de blah. They have an ancient secret agreement with the Inquisition per their super secret squirrel arrangements with the Emperor at the start of the Imperium. I realize that this could not stand. No furries in my 40k. Chaos abominations are fine, sure. They're okay, they exist to be burned. Furry race of furries that retcon the whole setting? Not a f***ing chance. Not from this guy. When I had a badge and a gun, I had a copy of the uplifting primer in the glove box of my cruiser. And damn it, nobody is going to ruin my 40k. Begin operation, ruin dark heresy for furries at local game store, and also pick up nachos. We're bad at naming things. Like I've said in previous videos, vigilanteism in RPGs is pretty cringeworthy and nothing good ever comes out of it. But this story was originally posted on 4chan, so being a socially ill-adjusted dickhead is kinda par for the course. Overall, I don't know a lot about furries. I've talked to a few of them and they all seem to be pretty cool people, but I haven't educated myself about furry society. So my perspective is 100% from the outside looking in. All I know for sure is that there are good ones and that there are bad ones. And just like any other online community, they are almost 100% defined by the actions of the bad ones. One aspect about these bad furries that really annoys me that I don't really see being talked about is their sense of entitlement partnered with this persecution complex. If you're only here for the story, go ahead and skip ahead because this rant is going to be a long one. I don't have too many interactions with furries when I'm online, but even I've seen this exact scenario happen multiple times. A furry starts doing weird furry shit. A normie says they don't like said weird furry shit. And then the furry goes nuclear. I believe that furries have the right to engage in their weird and creepy shenanigans if it doesn't hurt anyone. But on the other hand, everyone else has the right to think that your weird and creepy shenanigans are weird and creepy. You aren't being persecuted, you're being told no. And everyone has the right to say no. You do not have the right to just show up in a Discord server and turn the general chat into a fetish roleplay channel, and you do not have the right to just start humping legs in a D&D game. If just dropping weird sex <coughs> shit in people's laps is so ingrained in your identity that you interpret people getting uncomfortable as discrimination, well maybe it's time to take a good hard look at your identity. Look, this isn't a bully the furries video and I don't want anyone thinking that it is. So I'm just gonna say it again. Good furries exist. But just because there is good doesn't mean you should ignore the bad. If I have one perfectly healthy leg, but the other one is being gnawed on by a honey badger, I'm not gonna ignore all the blood I'm losing and say, Oh, it's okay, good legs exist. No, motherfucker, I'm gonna use my healthy leg to kick the badger in the face before it bites off my foot. We infiltrate the game in pieces, each member playing something that the party doesn't have. Normal humans played by non-brain damaged members of society that actually have jobs and don't live off mommy and daddy as they go to art school, which they then use as an excuse to draw as much furry porn as possible slash end mini rant. We rolled up, 
open-minded members of the Mechanicus, explaining to the DM that we would honor any ancient treaty no matter what, so long as we got first crack at Archaeotech and Shiny Bits. He allows us to join. First gaming session is on a table with two of these long bench seats. I'm sure your game store has those. On one side is the Coalition of the Willing, made up of the trio of tech priests, all level 5. On the other side is a bunch of smelly people in fake fur trappings. They're broken characters rolled up and ready. By the by, each stat of theirs, due to racial bonuses, is made up of the following formula. 30 plus 3d12. And includes special classes such as Dark Reaver and Harvester of Sorrow, and other crap that is epic level equipment. Best quality that destroys all armor and has impossible ranges. For example, there's a sword that he invented that is only usable by their race due to their close relationship with nature. This nature alignment allowed them to wield the sword made of what appears to be black, ever-shifting tar that when it strikes you, you take 1d10 damage with no armor or toughness save per turn, until one of their kind decides to heal you. It's called the Sword of Forgiveness or some other weeaboo shit as they have to forgive you for you not to die. Thanksgiving dinner poop sword notwithstanding, we are ready. Our once awesome, now failtastic DM tells the party that- Did this OP just make me read the word failtastic? Like what is this, f***ing 2010? Are you gonna make an it's over 9,000 joke next? Jesus Christ. Our once awesome, now horrible DM tells the party that we were responsible for the destruction of his last game. They stare at us. One growls. One of them actually f***ing growled and took his fake tail in his fat sausage fingers and waved it. If people did shit like this a hundred years ago, they would be in a place called Wellsville, and they would be exploring a land of electroshock therapy, salt baths, and colonic irrigation with yogurt. The DM says that we will begin our story, and that he introduces a rule for everyone at the table. He says, Anyone who dies in this session is dead for the remainder of the game. No new characters, you just have to watch, all agreed? The furries nod. This fat chick with a kind of furry mask thing chin moves like a sack of cream gravy. It's obvious he told them separately that if they wanted to try to kill us with the uncontrollable tar-like stool wand, we would stay dead and they can get broken XP. Not so fast, furball. I looked at the DM and realized that my once friend was now just a freaking nutcase, and it was up to me to bring him back to normalcy, or just break his game like a little kid to be a jackass. We are level 5. He has allowed us to take one piece of equipment from the book and three reloads. What about cyber implants or anything else? No, it's broken, and we have to earn it, he says. Yet the furries have an armor, I shoot you not, that is 16 armor on all locations, and is made of a silk-like substance that changes color based on mood. We all choose multi-meltas. I'm sure you know where this is going. Ten seconds into our first adventure on their spaceship that is way better than any Imperial spaceship, and is also made out of organic space plants. Ten minutes into inane role-playing about how beautiful and unique all their characters are. Ten minutes into cursing humans and wondering why they have to work with us mechanical men. We decide to gather them all into a room. We all gather into this room. A room with a huge armor-plated piece of crystal glass. And they offer to tell us the history of their people. The DM beams. He hands a sheet of papers to the speaker. The speaker of truth, apparently, is an honored position amongst her clan. She tells us of this bizarro 40k history, where they were behind everything. 
From the rise of the Emperor, the dark age of technology, giving the Adeptus Mechanicus their tech, and keeping all of this a big huge secret. Then they were betrayed! We listen, this goes on for 30 minutes. It is painful. But the moment of glory is at hand. I make the sign of the cog and offer to tell them a history. They call us liars, but we try to tell the real history of 40k, as far as human reckoning is. They interrupt us a dozen times over with chants of lies, lies, and howling. Yes, they howled. At the very end, I say, There is one part of your history that you forgot, human animal heretics. And they seemed puzzled. The DM seems puzzled. We say, the part where you die. We opened up with multi meltas all three of us overlapping our fields of fire at point-blank range. The DM starts screaming at us immediately. The store owner tries to calm him down, but he keeps screaming. He turns red, his hands shake, he is furious. We work out the damage to the max, as we cannot miss at this range. The DM returns 10 minutes later, swearing at us and saying, You're all fucking dead! You die! Get out of my game! You are fucking vermin! And so on and so forth. But as we leave, he explains that they're actually not dead, and that we can't kill them due to the special abilities that they all have from their belts, that allows them to soak the first 50 points of damage. Something they say they created to prevent backstabs from Imperial assassins sent to cull the last of their numbers. We left and had beer. The end. Epilogue. We started going to the other game store in town. We hear that they have their own dark heresy setting called Revenge of the Scattered, which the game store owner calls Revenge of the Scat Herd, all based on the above fluff. End of story. I'm hardly advocating for the actions of OP and his 4chan cronies, but as a 40k fan I'm not gonna lie and say that I'm disappointed with the results. It's obvious that going into a game with the express intent of f***ing with the DM isn't an environment to create a healthy RPG group, but I'm not stupid enough to think that 4chan is welcoming to proper RPG etiquette. I mean, after all, when it comes to purging abhorrent xenos and vile heretics, manners isn't something that the Imperium of Man takes into account. And I must say that almost everything I've witnessed has been cringe. But seriously though, don't be an asshole, even if it does make for a good green text. Now before we go, let's take a look at this week's Gallery of the Drake. This week's fan art is done by viewer Van Howlsing. What some people don't know is that I am a method actor, and sometimes to get into character for my stories, I'll don some items from my cringe hoard. When in Rome, do as the neckbeards do. However, finding fedoras fit for a dragon like myself tends to be a challenge. Okay, how the fuck am I supposed to wear this? You're supposed to wear it on your head, stupid. Someone kill him. Thank you again, Van Halsing, for submitting your art. If you want to see your artwork featured in Gallery of the Drake, be sure to send it to the email in my About section. Fan art is my favorite part of doing YouTube, and it means the world to me that I can create content that inspires artists like you to create artwork like this. With the story over and artwork displayed, we're gonna go ahead and wrap up. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you feel like supporting the channel even further, Patreon and merchandise links are in the description. I would like to thank you all for listening, and I hope to see you next time in the Den of the Drake.